The House of Run podcast. What are you into these days? Mostly running, Howard. Running. Yeah. Look at Bill! Look at Bill! It's coming on! Bill, it's coming on! Oh! I'm not thinking about making the team. I'm thinking about gold in Munich. What can I say? I got beat by Zebra. Starts now. Welcome back to the House of Run podcast. House of Run at gmail.com is our email address. I'm Kevin. He's Jason. On the show today, we're talking Sidney McLaughlin. We're talking Meb Kofleski. We're talking Usain Bolt. It's a star-studded cast of people we didn't think we'd be talking about <laughs> in October. Yet here we are, Jason. How you feeling? I'm doing good. Uh, we just we just had a nice uh, what thirty minute baseball conversation pre pod. So that Ooh. was that was good. We covered it, covered the DH, covered the playoffs, covered all sorts of strategy. It was it was a good time. It was exciting. I'm so excited. I just accidentally hit my mic. So if people are wondering what noise that was, it almost fell in my lap, but I saved it just so no one would notice what happened. Yeah, we, we covered, we ran the gamut basically um, of baseball topics and I ran out of information in about 30 minutes. That will not be a problem on this show because the aforementioned trio have probably combined for what would you say? 88 hours of talking in the history of this pod. It's got to be at least right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Sydney's only been around for, for a little bit, I guess, comparatively, but, uh, mm-hmm. easily. Yeah. The, the three of, three of the most popular. I mean, if you throw in, you know, Rudisha, um, I don't even know who else would, would crack like the, the all time Felix, you know, Felix. Felix. Yeah. Felix was a good one. Oh, a certain three named gentleman whose double one might say was mm. quite easy until it wasn't. He That's got, true. He got a lot of play. Yeah. He, in the last couple of years, he might be, he, he might be at the top. Both has to be number one, though, right? Yeah, I think overall, especially because when we started the show, and I mean, there was every week, like we, we would just talk about Usain Bolt, especially in the beginning, because we're like, well, we don't know what else to talk about, and we know people like <laughs> Usain Bolt. We used to have a segment called This Week in Bolt. Do you remember? That's that? true. Yeah, I remember the I remember the jingle too. Yeah, one of the award winning segments in the early years of the show. Uh, let's start though with with Sydney. Announced today, recording this on a. Monday evening, she signed a deal with New Balance to the surprise of many in the track and field world, myself included. Thought she was going to go with Nike. Obviously, as of recording, don't have any details about the contract itself or about where she's coach, you know, where is she going to train or who she's going to be coached by or anything like that. But still a little bit of a uh, shock, you could say, anytime Nike does not get the big name track and field athlete. It's a little bizarre. And especially someone like Sydney, who, you know, our friend Otto Bolden has been on the show talking about this exact topic, basically said she's the one of the most, if not the most marketable track and field athletes um, in this era. And he said her coming up now is kind of giving a glimpse into what it would have been like for Flojo to come up now. And that's like, incredible praise given how much yeah. uh, Flojo permeated pop, pop culture even even now so yeah what did you think of the signing yeah I, I don't think I yeah I didn't have New Balance coming I mean that would have been I don't know probably above Skechers um, but not <laughs> a whole lot else as far as like where I would have you know Nike seemed like the most obvious because you just assume everyone's going to sign with Nike um, but yeah I mean I guess say whatever Whatever works, I'm sure they they must have put in a good offer. I'm sure Nike, you know, talked to her. Um, but uh, New Balance, New Balance, striking big. I, I, I mean, I like it. Like, I think that's kind of cool. And she'll she might have a different kit than the other people at the line, which will be which will be yes, fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you see the uh, Did you see the rollout on Instagram the the video in I Times did. Square? Yes, it was good. I, I enjoyed that. I like the yeah the the big billboard behind her. Um, she does say they've been with with me since the beginning. Which I don't know what that means. Well, so in high school, New Balance, at least a couple of years, New Balance sponsored her high school team. And then every year in high school, because, you know, athletes these days, there's like an array of postseason meets you can choose from, right? Because there's all these all star meets now. Right. So basically, every shoe company has at least one all-star meet um i guess well not every single one but there's you know there's new balance nationals uh brooks has a meet nike obviously has you know meets and elite camps and stuff like that 
every year of high school, every season, so indoor and outdoor, she ran New Balance Nationals. And I'm guessing that's what that meant. Yeah, I don't know if they've been with her since the beginning. She's been with New Balance since the beginning, I guess. Well, we'll look at that. Okay. Either way, I mean, it's not a a, huge deal, but it's like they sponsored your high school. It's like, well, we had a Nike swoosh or whatever on our jerseys, but I don't know if I'd say I've been sponsored by Nike since uh, high school. If you got signed, that's what I would say. (laughs) Like, Guys, when I was six and I bought way too much stuff at Nike Town, I was with you from the beginning, man. Right. I mean, like, hey, it's like. I mean, I'm just, it was just kind of a random thought to me, but, um, Hey, it's like I said, it's, it's, like I said, it's kind of cool. Um, it's a big move by, by new balance, which is, yeah, which is interesting. Yeah. They got Trayvon Bromel. They have yep. Gabby Thomas who they signed last week. So a couple sprinters there. my big takeaway from the video was nobody in times square noticed. There was a huge <laughs> right. Sydney thing and stopped and been like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to put this on Twitter, or Instagram. Not sure when they filmed it, but. There's just people like walking by and it says, go Sid, go. Like if I was in New York at that point, I'd be like, huh, this is incredible. But I guess maybe stuff like that happens in New York all the time in Times Square or everybody just tries to avoid Times Square. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Um, Track athlete, even someone as famous as Sydney, probably not going to draw quite as much attention. But yeah, big flashing billboards. eh, It's probably pretty common. I don't think it would stick out that much at Vegas either. Yeah, we did a live uh, reaction video to this uh, today in the office on FlowTrack. So I know the answer to this, mm. but I want to see how close you can get. Because everybody says, well, her marketability obviously is tied into the fact that she has such a big social media presence. Do you know how many followers on Instagram she has? Well, I'm on her Twitter page right now. Okay, um, that's cheating. Why no, I – well, because I was – on you know where her video was and so it just is like at the top so i wasn't intentionally doing that um but i see the hundred eight thousand followers on twitter uh so I, I wanted to let you know i was cheating there uh i have no idea like i feel like instagram is more popular now is that accurate or at least i'm not giving any hints just yeah need to guess I, like that's just kind of my, my thought at least especially in like a younger age group i feel like instagram is more popular than twitter um i'll go 150 299,000. Ooh, wow. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Just as a point of comparison, Allison Felix has 578,000. But Allison Felix has... Her career started long before Instagram started. I would right? think that's, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Sydney's... Just for reference, I have 209. <laughs> if, you guys need an, if you guys need a point to shoot for, Jason has 209. Uh, I mean, so... Do you think this changes anything um, either for her, for New Balance, for track and field in the United States? Or what, if anything – let me rephrase it. What, if anything, could this change, shift, alter, et cetera? Uh, I don't think it changes anything for her. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it has a huge effect. Like, if you're a star, I, I think, like, then they'll release, you know, they'll release your shoe and that'll be – cool and it doesn't particularly matter what it is i mean nike's a bigger name but she'll be the like the you know the big a big name attached to it so Mm -hmm. i I don't think it affects her one way or the other um i think i guess it could be good for new balance like i think that could (laughs) maybe yeah like i mean like i mean obviously but like i think that if anything like it has a bigger effect on new balance than on her and it's i mean new balance is a massive massive company but like this is a very like huge profile someone who could be a superstar for like the next, you know, 15 year plus years or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. and is, is already a like, you know, world record and gold medal threat. Um, so like that's, yeah, I think that's a, that's a big deal for them. Um, but it, you know, for the sport or anything like that, I mean, I guess, you know, the more it gets opened up to other shoe companies and, you know, new balance isn't this tiny thing, but it's, it's still not Nike and like not Adidas or whatever. So it's, I guess that's, I mean, I think that's good that, you know, more like if New Balance is in the game, throwing money around as well, then that's mm-hmm. good for the athletes. My impression always with Nike, because they're so large, they carry such huge influence. So they'd be more likely, I would guess, to dictate terms in her career. But she almost seems too big for that, right? Like, oh, you need to race here. Or you need to do that. Or you need to join this group. I 
I would guess someone would have the sense not to muck around with that sort of stuff. Like, hey, you're doing fine on your own. Right. Let us know what you need and and we'll get it for you. But I don't think New, New Balance doesn't seem like that that would be an issue at all. I think she'll get to have complete control over where she goes. You know, obviously she's going to be at the – she'll be the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix from now mm-hmm. until eternity. So you can yes. pencil that <laughs> race in just like Jenny Simpson is always there. Brenda Martinez, Emma Coburn, et cetera, they're always going to be at that meet. But other than that, I don't see them as being um, this, you know, this sort of overbearing corporate sponsor that has a large say over how she trains or who she trains with and how she races and how often and what events she does. I I just feel like they would be like, dude, that's so cool that you want to (laughs) be with our company and whatever you need. Yeah, she um, might be more like I mean Nike. I mean, obviously has all of the athletes basically. Um, yeah. So I mean, you know, if you're doing a Nike track and field commercial or whatever, you know, ad or online, whatever it is, you have a, a lot of athletes to choose from, and then Sydney would be right near the top of that list, along with several others. I mean, New Balance. You, if it's possible, you could see even more things focused around her, as they yes. just don't have the. the you know, the, the, there's just not that as many athletes to, to kind of grasp at. So you could see just, you know, especially lead up to Olympics and stuff like that. Like you could see some very specific Cindy McLaughlin, basically commercials for New Balance, where right. if the Nike version of that is her along with 16 other faces that they keep going between and then starting and all that stuff that's in the same yeah. Nike commercial I've seen a hundred times. But yeah, I, I think it's, there's some is there some parallels here to Steph Curry and Under Armour? Mm. I mean okay. Steph Curry, you know, famously went into a presentation when he needed a new sponsor, which I'm guessing was was that it wasn't his rookie year, right? Or or was it I guess they would've he would have got a shoot deal, right? His rookie year. Um I mean he was what, like the seventh, eighth overall pick. Well that's the thing. So he wasn't as big in his sport as she was in hers. But he famously went into this presentation um, with either Nike or Adidas. I, I'm not entirely sure. And they like – it was bad. Like it looked – it was like generic. They had like someone else's name on like the PowerPoint like oh, wow. pitch that they did to him. So the idea was, oh, you go to Under Armour and you can be like the main guy in basketball. Right. Like, you're, you're not competing with anybody else. And that's probably the case for Sydney. And that might even be the case you know, outside of – track for her right like it's not like new balance when it comes to the olympics right people competing in olympic sports how many athletes are there in the world that new balance sponsors that are at her level and and then if you want to extend that beyond olympic sports just any sports in general how many athletes does new balance have that are at her level or could have her star power yeah so it gives you like a platform all to yourself where Nike, yeah, you're one of a bunch. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. So like it's yeah, it can't hurt. I was just Googling biggest New Balance athletes and um let's see Matt Bonner, there. former San Antonio Spurs great. Oh, Emma Coburn Balance. comes up here real quick. That's nice. Oh, okay. Well yeah, I don't think it's uh I mean they sponsored a lot of distance runners for many yeah. years. And that was that was virtually it because they mostly made just running shoes. I know recently they've made basketball and baseball uh, cleats, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's a, that's like a relatively new phenomenon, I believe. And um, they, I mean, they, they've cornered the middle-aged dad market, right? I mean, well, that's sec- secure yeah. socks. Yeah. <laughs> like that's <laughs> the biggest. When, when SNL did that skit, that's when they decided like, we need the next big thing. We don't care who it is. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking through there that you're right. Matt Bonner's on there. They mentioned that James Worthy also used New Balance shoes, which okay, is a weird so... like thing to say. Not like James Worthy was also like a New Balance guy. It's like he just used the shoes. Um, so maybe I should clarify: they didn't just start making basketball shoes, but they started. They just started sponsoring. This this is pretty great. Athletes. Did you know that Bonner was sent a prototype for a signature shoe that it was developing, but the shoes fell apart in the beginning of a game in the first game that he wore them in. After Bonner was informed that the prototype, to, prototype shoes were not meant to be worn, a representative <laughs> informed him that New Balance was ceasing its sponsorship of basketball. Oh, wow. What Matt year was that? Matt Bonner 
in the 2010-2011 season destroyed New Balance in, in the NBA. Well, they were designed to be played for three quarters. They just came up one short. <laughs> that's that's a, is fantastic. It, that's an all-time Wikipedia. That's good. I, I'm I'm very happy about this. Yeah, highlight there. Well, while we're talking about Sydney, lots of cricketers also. Sorry. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Oh, cricket. Apparently, New Balance also sponsors international cricketers, and then there's about 15 names on here, uh, and none of whom I recognize. Any of the are any of the baseball players big names? Uh, baseball's or, not even listed on here. Okay, so they just make shoes. They're not necessarily giving like a, people signature shoes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if the, I wonder if she'll get her own spike. I would think she would. I right? would have to think so. I I, I think I, I would say you don't do this sponsorship unless you're going to do that, right? I mean, yeah. The the other parallel I was discussing today with basketball was just the idea of been with me from the beginning and how. The whole point of you know AAU basketball camps being sponsored by big shoe companies was to get you know hooks in early mm. on the next LeBron James or LeBron James himself, right? By sponsoring those teams, and they just pump a ton of money into those camps and those tournaments in the hopes that one percent of those kids pan out and. That kid remembers that, or those kids remember that, oh, it was brand X or brand Y that sponsored my team. That's pretty cool. Or yeah, they, even subconsciously, they, it's just like there. Yeah. So, and I think that's, I mean, the fact that New Balance has these all star meets and the fact that New Balance is sponsoring high school teams, maybe we're seeing that in, you know, involved in track and field as well now, too. Yeah. Because there's really no one like, I mean, It'll be interesting when the story comes out on this of how many companies were involved because there's really, in recent memory, there hasn't really been anybody like her where it was just universally known that she's going to be a star. And I don't, I mean, it's obviously, Felix, you right? Go, I mean, that's. Yeah, yeah but that was. That was a long well, time that was, ago. That was but... a long time ago. And that was like before all the stuff that went along with being a star was there i mean you couldn't like quantify her appeal like you can like sitting behind you could say two hundred ninety nine thousand instagram followers and you're like oh okay like felix you knew she was going to be obviously really fast and really good but just like it, it let me it, it made it seem like more of a no-brainer right to sign sydney than felix in a way just just because you knew like oh yeah that she's definitely going to translate outside of the track you're like oh how do you know that it's like okay well go to her page and look at this right like right. Felix, you couldn't necessarily do that. Although she, I mean, she was great, and all the signs pointed to it. But it seems like you couldn't really overpay for her, within reason, right? I mean, someone's like hundred million dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, but you know, it, I don't think New Balance is going to like regret doing this in ten years. No, no, definitely not. Like, I, I mean, I'd be that's definitely very shocked if not. I was curious. I was thinking. I was like, I mean, we, you know, Mary Kane was is not at the same was not at the same level as Cindy McLaughlin, but she was like this phenomenon, right? I mean, and she was yeah. as, as good as you could expect a middle distance runner to be in high school, basically like mm-hmm. that's at a, you know, Jim Ryan or something. Um, how many Instagram followers do you think Mary Kane has? So you said you, so I would guess closer to you than Cindy McLaughlin. Yeah. I mean, you'd be right with that for sure. I would guess uh, 8,000. 16. 16,000? Oh. Yeah. So, like, I mean, good. Don't get me wrong. This is nothing insulting about that. But it's like, that's a massive gap between those yeah. two. Like, I mean, it's, and, and like I said, the, the talent, you know, like I said, Mary Kane was unbelievably talented and breaking every record that was, like, conceivable to break at the time. But, yeah. like, Cindy McLaughlin is, like, like I said, world record gold medal threat right now. And, it, you know, in, in sprints, which, you know, in the U.S. is going to be a little more... Uh, you know premiere anyway so yeah 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 well and also i'm not an expert on instagram's popularity but i feel like sydney's rise coincide i feel like (laughs) i feel like sydney's right well tell me if i'm wrong but doesn't it feel like sydney's rise coincided more with the popularity of instagram than like kane if kane was doing what she did in 2013 and 14 now yeah no that's a very good point 
I think it'll be higher just just by the just because it's much more ubiquitous. Um, I'd say unquestionable. Yeah, I mean it's and I'm like who has more MySpace followers? Is basically what I'm saying. Yeah, that's a, exactly. I mean it's Instagram has been around for a while, but I feel like oh, okay, you know Facebook was the biggest thing, right? And then like Twitter and Facebook were kind of the biggest things, and Instagram was becoming a thing. Yeah, but not. I don't feel like that many people used it. But granted, I'm not as young as those people uh but oh certainly over the past like two years in particular i would say Mm -hmm. it seems like instagram is just like starting to blow both of those out of the water well so they got bought and all that stuff and then like snapchat came and went they just took the snapchat did the stories right the videos and then yeah or instagram just basically took that and then put on their platform and then everyone's like what i have snapchat and now you don't even hear about snapchat anymore anyway this is a running podcast (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> somewhat it's also tangentially. social media experts just talking <laughs> talking game you know tangentially that's the oldest i've felt in a while let's talk about meb we're probably on firmer ground talking about meb absolutely he dropped some interesting quotes in a runner's world jason runner's world article yeah saying he's thinking about a comeback hasn't ruled it out uh do you think to borrow some phrasing from Stephen Colbert. Do you think this is a great idea or the greatest idea, <laughs> a Meb comeback? The greatest idea, for sure. Um, How in are you on this from a scale I, of one to a hundred? It's it's just like Sydney's Twitter fo- or Instagram followers, <laughs> like two hundred ninety six thousand. Um, it yes, I mean it ha- it has to happen basically. Um, Whoa. Whoa, it has to. Okay, why? Because first of all. He might be a favorite to make the team right now because whoa, after whoa. Galen Rupp, it's a bunch of garbage. Sorry, guys. Step your game up. Um, someone break 212. Just somebody in the U.S. Like, do it. Okay. Please. Um, and I'd bet on – I think I could bet on Meb. Like, if he was like, I'm going to try to train for Tokyo, I could bet on him running 211, and that might be enough to make the team. Okay. So uh, why – so so that's the reason is just – Well, yeah. Because I mean, he can make the team? Yeah, I mean, making your fifth Olympic team, and he talked about how th- he thought that would be cool, which is just a perfectly <laughs> meb thing. Like, it's just like, I always thought that would be cool because there's five Olympic rings, and I'd make the Olympics five times. And yeah, it would be cool, meb. You're absolutely right. Like, I, I, I can't argue with that logic. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, of course, like, hey, if you love him retirement, but the fact that he's already considering it. Yeah. And I would say just with thinking. the history of professional athletes. Uh, who consider coming back to do something like it's like a 98% like probability at that point, because these are the most competitive people in the world. And once they go, you know, and he looks around the landscape and sees again, nobody can break two twelve, and just goes, yeah, you know what? It would be cool. Even if I, if I make the Olympic team, doesn't matter if I do well in the, in the actual Olympics themselves, like I'll make my fifth Olympics at, you know, 40, Four, five, five, five. I don't know what he'll be at that point. Um, he would be four. Well, he's forty three right now. So forty four, forty five. Um, <laughs> that'd be amazing. Yeah, and it's just a, it's a great story. And Meb's the bet. Like, there's no, there's no doubt. And guess what? If he runs the Olympic trials and finishes fifth, yeah, fantastic. No goodbye, goodbye, running. Good times. Like, I mean, there's no, there's no downside to it. Like, absolutely none. Like, people go. Sometimes, you know, like the tarnish your legacy thing. Like, there, there's no, literally not one person who would be, like, down on Meb after he tried to make his fifth Olympic team at 45 years old. I'm pretty much in agreement with the reason. I mean, if if the United States marathon yearly list was, like, 206, 208, 209, 210, 211, and not 206, 07, and then 212, 213, 214. Yeah. I don't know if he'd be thinking about it as hard. Yeah, for sure. There's also the, oh, that sounds like a good idea versus reality of, oh, when he goes back to start training again, if he for really sure. wants to put that in. The only thing that gives me pause, you know, 2016, obviously, very good. Made the Olympic team. You know, Finished 33rd at the Olympics, but poured everything into making the team and you know ran really well. And when you consider, I mean, Rupp beat him handily, but the fact that he like kept it close against Rupp in retrospect is pretty right. Like a very impressive based on what Rupp went on to do 
just a couple months later. I mean, he lost by, you know, just over a minute um, to Rupp. So the only thing that gives me pause is the, the 2017 seasons, right? So the year after that, when he was sort of on his farewell tour, um, he didn't really, he didn't run well in either Boston or New York. Um, not a major thing. I mean, maybe he was sort of already focused on post running at that point. And what do you run in New York? 213? 215. So he ran 217 and got 13th in Boston. And then he ran 215, 29 and got 11th in New York city. Um, let me see where he finished among the Americans. Cause I don't even remember what the finishing times were. I'm guessing. Yeah. So Cam War ran 210. So that was like a quote unquote, that was a tactical marathon. So the top American was Abdi who ran 212.48. And Abdi's only two years younger than Meb. Right. Shadrach Biwat ran 214.57. So he beat Rupp by about tw- uh, 32 seconds. And then Meb actually beat Jared Ward by three minutes. So it's not as bad as it seems. Like it's not as slow. And you're like, oh, he can only run 215. He was right in there with the guys he would need to beat. Because Shadrach Biwat would be somebody who, I mean, Biwat doesn't have like a crazy fast PR, but he ran uh, really well at Boston this year um, and has turned up at um, major marathon or major city marathons and run well before. And he's not that far away. But then it's another two years or a year and a half, right? So can he stay healthy? I'd love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's obviously, it's, you know, I said, hey, hey, he could make the team and I, I still I absolutely believe that you know 45 and who knows but like hey it, it may be a a year off of and doing some casual running like mm-hmm. isn't the worst thing in the world possibly, yeah uh, yeah for, for a marathoner's body especially an older an older marathoner's body um I don't know I mean it's it, like I said there is absolutely zero downside to it at all um when I was reading that article they mentioned well and ironically his chief rival if he does come back might be Bernardo the God, who's also over forty, and I thought, well, wow, that's if that really is his chief rival. Like, I take Meb. I mean, Legat, not going to count him out at all, but he'll be running his first one in New York City. I'll take Meb, having run twenty six of them before, yeah, and just the the experience factor alone, it's worth so much in a marathon. And there's no guarantees that Legat's going to try to make that team. I think someone's going to crop up, right? I mean, you you were so high and your heart has been broken by the <laughs> American marathoners here and you can just hear it in your your tone as you discuss them. But I I would think odds are someone's going to have to get at least closer to like 210 and and sort of separate themselves from that group. But yeah, no one's other than Rupp has anybody run under to well, you'd have to go back to 2016, the last time someone other than Rupp, ran faster than 212. Um, and that was actually Ward and Rio ran 211.30. Hmm. Obdi in New York ran 211.23. And Bobby Curtis ran 211.20. But see, those are all guys. Like, I don't know how much Curtis has even run since then. I mean, those are all guys who have been around. They're known qualities. So it's not like they're, I don't think they're the candidates like bust a 208 out of nowhere. Yeah. How fast? So, do you think Meb could get in, like back into two eleven shape? Like, how much would it be if he did make the team, or if he was relevant? How much would it be? Oh, it just needs to be a down year versus. Oh no, he can actually get back to where he was. Uh, I mean, so if you're running like what Houston or whatever, so I mean that's a moderately fast marathon. I want to say, um, not which one talking about? Uh, like the with the trials, is it Houston? Uh, Atlanta, mm. which is supposed to be hilly too. He was like on mm. the committee that got it, brought it to Atlanta. But yeah, anyway. Okay. I mean, so, but I mean, yeah, obviously like you, you kind of course correct. So assuming a fat, let's just assume like a standard fast course. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't think, you know, two twelves is out of the realm of possibility. Faster than that, maybe. I mean, it's, I, you know, I, I'm not betting on him running to, you know, he was, he rarely ran two oh nines even when, right. he was, when he was good. Um, but I think he's in that 11 and 12 range and, or at least has the, the potential to be in that 11 or 12 range. Um, 
certainly could end up short of that. But I mean, I don't, I don't know if he if he's in there and he has you know somewhat of the fitness, and I think if he looks around and sees a bunch of guys like really struggling in that in that range, like I, I don't know, I'm I'm probably betting on him. And and you're right. I mean, I still do think that someone or some, or multiple someones are going yeah. to emerge as at least somewhat like solid, you know, two ten marathoners. But right, it hasn't happened. So I mean, and we're we're what I mean, less than a year and a half to the trials at this point. Yeah, yeah, it's the beginning of 2020. So there's New York, right, and then there's the spring marathon season in 2019 the fall marathon Mm. season in 2019 which a lot of them will skip if they're going to run in the trials because the trials are early 2020 yeah so basically you got one more yeah like one and a half yeah i mean like yeah depending what you want to say like it's it's you don't have much to show your cards yeah i mean maybe someone breaks out in that time but it's like asking for you know the, the 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 shift of American marathon, men's marathon, to, to, to switch. Yeah. It would take something pretty drastic to happen within, within 12 months. Well, I'd have to turn on a diamond and have to be a, a wave almost of people just like all of a sudden like, Oh yeah, we were holding back before, yeah. but now here Meb's coming back and we are scared to death. I mean, I like, it's the ultimate Meb move. You can never like, when was Meb's peak? If you're like, well, when he was at his peak, you don't know. Cause it's just been up and down and mostly up. Uh, and it would be amazing if he, at 45 if he was out there battling. If I had told you in 2012, right, 2012 Olympics, mm-hmm. Usain Bolt wins gold, Ashton Eaton wins gold, Meb got fourth that year, right? 2012, am I right on that? I trust your memory of that over mine. <laughs> let, me double, let me double check here. I believe that is true. Yes, he was fourth. If I told you in 2012, I said... Only one of those three, Bolt, Eaton, and Meb, will compete at the 2020 <laughs> Olympics or even Olympic trials. Right. I would not have guessed. Meb. Well, you're still not going to guess wrong because Eaton's coming back and so is Bolt. It's just going to be. I mean, be sh- I would. Sh- I, w- I want the Eaton comeback. I just. I never would have guessed. Like, honestly, this sort of caught me by surprise. And I thought, oh, I was. Really naive. Probably should have seen that coming because he just is a guy who like loves to run and loves to be around running, and that makes sense. And since he's already gone and done it in well into his forties, like why not? Like what's two more years for him? Yeah. But I yeah I would have said Eaton probably a hundred times out of oh yeah. And and on the topic of tarnished legacies, I mean, do you remember Usain Bolt's last race? I do. I do recall. What ha- what happened? Do you remember? Uh, I think he. I feel like he 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 didn't finish. Even I feel like he came up short. All right. Well, that ruined my example. I was hoping you say something else. But like, see, you didn't remember. He didn't finish. <laughs> I actually did remember that. It's a, it's a, that one's a pretty easy one to remember. I mean, there's certain definitely things that I you know have trouble keeping in mind. But that that one. Do you feel like his legacy has been tarnished? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we don't even talk about him anymore. Like, when's the last time we talked about Usain Bolt on this show? Well, we're about to talk about him because he played soccer and did really well. But, yeah, I just – you don't lose anything. No. And and the people who say, hey, you know, Jordan and the Wizards, Willie Mays on the Mets or – people don't really remember that. Like, it's – it's there there is no tarnish. Like, you did, like, the amazing things you did. And, I mean, I would say, you know, even – and, okay, Meb is the best. I love Meb. Um, Meb's not, like, the greatest of all time. Meb is like the perfect guy to make the comeback in this. Yeah. You know, like it's, he, he would be even less hurt. Like I said, I don't think anybody's hurt by this stuff. Even the the greatest of all time stuff. Meb is the perfect guy to actually do it. And, and he has only things to gain. Well, right. Cause if you're saying is, Oh, it's not the perfect ending. Okay. Well, was the perfect ending finishing 11th in New York city? Like was a perfect ending finished 13th at Boston. Was it getting 33rd in the Olympics? Like, yeah, None he, would, he are... had to stop after his last win, or if he makes the Olympics, <laughs> like that's if you want the perfect <laughs> ending, this is the last chance for it. Yeah, doesn't literally if he make if he made the Olympic team, it he could not even run the Olympics and it wouldn't matter. Right. If he makes the Olympic team, like I mean I don't know, we'd have to go through the history here, but 
in terms of U.S. track and field, that has to be one of the most impressive things in the history of the sport. And yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say. I mean, you're you're saying five Olympic teams. Remember, he missed the 08 I think out of six. Yeah, <laughs> that's almost more impressive. That yeah, it was five that out of it was, six. It's so absurd. I mean, his still is to Jason starts in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> and in 1996, he ran a 1337 5K. Oh my god, I love it! I mean, this is just this incredible. Um, and I think, I think, I mean, I think that men's race is going to need something to get people excited about, and this would be the exact thing. Oh because yeah, Rupp walking to victory, and then two other people. There'll be some. Oh, you know, who gets the second, and third spots? Wide open. Da da da. That'll be. Fun, but ultimately those people aren't going to contend for medals, and the the prospect of Meb getting number five to match the Olympic rings, <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yeah, you're right. It's very, it's like he's very into symbolism. He wanted to go out on his 26 marathon. Yeah, that's one for every mile. I respect that, and and it if he doesn't come back, I wouldn't think any less of him. But like the second this was mentioned, I was like, yeah. Of course. Yes, do it. Don't even think, just don't even consider anything else. Just yes. We're easy, though. Just as with doubles, we're always going to say yes to comebacks. Well, right? yeah. Like, there's, mean, never, it's, there's never been a comeback I don't agree with. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's, there's yeah, because there, what, what's the, I mean, why would we be against this? Why would anyone be against this? Unless you're you know, one of the 17 to 13 marathoners <laughs> in the US. Right. Then I understand. I understand. I would be right alongside with you if that was my predicament in life. But, the only reason I'd be the only time I'd be against it if this was someone being forced against their will to compete when they right. didn't, and come back when they didn't want to. Uh, I'll say uh, the, the one time I was against the comeback uh, when it got to the point where Brett Favre did it for like the seventh time, and I was just like, "Okay, this is enough. <laughs> Stay away. Nobody wants you anymore." Was that like Evander Holyfield too, who just kept doing Boxers it? Boxers do it a lot. Um, yeah, but at the same time, I don't even. I mean, I barely follow boxing enough to. Even have so you just assume team. everybody's retired or yeah, they're not retired. It, well, it's, but it's just like that does. I mean, people retire, quote unquote, retire in in boxing. Like every boxer is retired like six times, and it's just of course you do because you get punched in the head for a living. <laughs> like of course you're going to retire over and over. I would. I'd want to yeah. quit that job every day. I don't get hit in the head, and I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to quit. <laughs> Should we talk about Bolt? Yeah, absolutely. Scored scored a goal. Scored two goals. <sighs> Man, for the world co- world class, excuse me, Central Coast Mariners of the Australian Football Federation. I don't know. We yeah, started with Instagram. Now we're on to soccer. <laughs> Out of my depths once again. But I'm seeing this clip got 6.05 million views. Best thing to ever happen. I mean, they just this is uh, the whole sign Usain Bolt thing just paid for itself, right? Yeah. I mean, that's like. I mean, I think it signed for itself. Well, it paid for itself when they signed. But, yeah, I, but him scoring two, like it's like they just like no one knew who the Central Coast Mariners are besides you know very big football soccer. I'm not sure which one they call it in Australia. Uh, Australia soccer, soccer club, soccer, right? so it does say yeah. soccer. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's uh, I mean it's awesome. I I mean I love it. Like it's it's great that this happened. Like I it's. You know, I thought it was kind of ridiculous, and I, I don't really know where the Central Coast Mariners fall on the competition scale, like where they're at as far as you know on the levels of of high level soccer. I honestly, I have no idea. They're in the A League, mm-hmm. whatever that means. Um, I I don't think it's the top Australian league. The, I totally believe you. Um, I, there's, I think there's a league. Of, I asked someone about this. Okay, they, yeah. but uh, I, I could be wrong. But. Yeah, I'm just yeah. I, I like I said I love it. I think it's it's super fun that it's happening, and um, because now I mean now we can do the thing where we just put track athletes in other sports and they dominate. Where everyone wants to put other yeah. athletes in track and they dominate. So we can be like, nope. See, Usain Bolt, greatest soccer player of all time. I'm assuming it's probably the first time anyone scored two goals in a game, right? Because every soccer game ends one nothing. Is that yeah? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, pretty every sure. European <laughs> listener. I apologize. I'm on the. Uh... I'm on their website. I wanted to see how long it would take for me to find a picture headline with Bolt. Uh, 
and it was a well, it's the second on the little. There's like a little scrolling thing at the top, and the first headline is away day venue, the football grounds. So it's just like a preview. Yeah. Then the next one is Mike Mulvey ready for round one. And you're like, okay, that's the coach. And then it's Bolt. I'm happy with my progress. Highlights: lightning strikes twice in Campbelltown. A picture of Bolt doing the pose. Bolt strikes twice as Mariners win four zero. So they're definitely capitalizing on it. It also is funny to see his name on the roster. <laughs> I wish I would have checked like how many like Twitter followers or something Central Coast Mariners had like oh, a few yeah, weeks before. ago because they have forty thousand now. But I'm sure it wasn't even close to that a little while ago. Yeah. What? Uh, so do you think does this change your opinion of Bolt's decision to play soccer? It, I mean, no. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, it's it's one of those things. It's like it, I enjoy this. Like it's 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 fun. Like it's mm-hmm. it, it, it's better than him just going. I'm not going to do anything. Like if if that's if I have the choice between Usain Bolt running, I choose Usain Bolt running, um, or Usain Bolt retiring and and you know showing up at parties and in random things every once in a while. Okay, live your life, man. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, doing anything competitive where his speed might be a factor. Yeah, sign me up for that. If I can't have him you know, sprinting as fast as he can. I like that he's number 95 for 9-5, although I think he should have been 58. Mm. That would have been yeah, more Yeah, that's probably, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, he's good enough now. Well, I don't know how much he played in the scene, but the fact that he scored, right? Now people, it's not like he's sitting on the bench or he's like bad. I I would guess people are just going to keep going now. I mean, why I, wouldn't why if if you're there? Why wouldn't you go see him play? Oh, for sure. I mean, I would if I if it was like in my neck of the woods remotely. Like I would absolutely do it. Like how many how many games are we in? Where you, with like how many games has Usain Bolt played? Do we know? It's a good question, Jason. Uh, zero idea. Don't know. Well, he he no, I think he because he was on the bench for a game. Let me see here. I could probably figure this out. Um, because their season, I don't think results. Here we go. So they've played. They started playing. So they're the worst team in the league. On, they, well, they just started playing on October twelfth. Well, I'm, I just oh, these were last year's standings. They were the worst team in the league. They went four wins, eight draws, and fifteen losses. They finished. Yeah, two. what I'm what I'm seeing is they started playing in. Uh, October twelfth. Okay, so that was like the first game of the season then. Uh, s- oh no, sorry. They started playing August first, August first, August thirty first, and then uh, October twelfth. Oh, those are big, so, big breaks. Stand yeah, back. I don't, I don't know how. It's, I don't know much about the A League. I gotta be honest. But they <laughs> lost to Adelaide United three nothing. Then they lost six one. This can't be right because I thought he sat the bench at a game before. I, yeah, I, I mean, I know so little about soccer and. Well, there's a bench, and if you, you don't play, that's where you sit. That's pretty much no. You need you to, okay. What's that. a bench? <laughs> Old wooden ship. <laughs> uh, I'm going to Wikipedia page. I feel like someone should have figured this out. Um, other sports. Um, NBA All Star Weekend. Okay, here we go. So on August 21st, Bolt started training. He made his de- friendly debut for the club as a substitute on August 31st. Uh, on October 12th, he started a friendly against an amateur club, MacArthur South, and scored two goals both in the second half. So he has played a couple games, but they're still on friendlies. Okay. So there you go. Okay. I am just I was just like I mean I didn't know if this Do you think he now really thinks he's going to like make it to You saying Bolt? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. He, now, he that's, believes that's that. kind of awesome too because yeah. there's going to be a point when he is it's clear he can't and he's going to meet his like limit and it's going to be very strange. Yeah, I mean, when you when you are literally the greatest ever at something, and you know, hey, he's he's got a, a little bit of a um, ego, rightfully so, you could say. Um, you have to have just this unbelievable, relenting like belief in yourself, right? Yeah, I would think so, but I would also th- think you'd also be able to quickly identify your defi- like you'd also be able to see greatness in other people too. Yeah. And be like, oh, yeah, I'm not that. But I don't know. The fact that he's still doing it is revealing to me. I I don't know if I mentioned this on the show. 
when I watched the the Bolt documentary, which you still need to watch, by the way, and one day we'll do a review of the show or a review of the movie on the show. Yeah. Did I? So he was talking. There's a a clip, and he's in like his living room, sitting with a couple people. I don't know if it's his his agent or his friends or whatever. And he says something like, uh, "You know, my dad told me when I was growing up, like if you don't get first or if you don't win." try harder you just got to try harder and do it better the next time and if you try hard do as best as you can and you still don't win then you should probably quit because you're just not very good at it and it was like it was like a joke but it was like like he delivered it like really in in a very funny way but it was kind of it was very revealing about how he managed his career and also just like like you said the mindset of the talented out there yeah of like this whole like if you first you don't succeed try 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 again like he was like saying no some people are just bad right not talented at doing things and there's no point in banging your head against the wall because if you're not good now there's no way you're ever going to be great and i'm only interested in being great yeah and i i mean i i think he probably believes that but i so then wouldn't he be able to figure that out with well but i also believe that he can he can say that and not recognize it in himself. Okay, there you go. Because I, I I mean, least, hey, and I could be totally wrong. He could be absolutely like you know struggle the next level, whatever he does, and just goes, you know, obviously I'm not good enough at this. But I can't even you know it's not even like I'm blaming him or or judging him. It's like if you're that good at something, and you know, and, and you're doing something tangentially related to it. Sure, like. I yeah like I I would th- I would probably think I'd be great at that too yeah and he's already better than like most people right I mean like it's like he's playing in some sort of semi professional or professional even at the highest level league and he just scored two goals yeah I mean that's you know he's not a dumb guy I'm not you know saying that but it's like he can already go like well yeah I just I'm already dominating this this league. <laughs> Like, I mean, that's probably what he's saying. Well, yeah. I mean, it's obviously the competition isn't what he was shooting for, and I mean, just score. I mean, the whole, there's more to the game than just like scoring goals, too. So I don't, I don't. It, it creates this viral clip, right? Of oh my gosh, look at what he did. But you don't know what else he did during the during the course of the game as well, too. But no, I I I'd buy that. I think it's interesting because it's it's a very you know Jordan rides the bus situation here. Yeah, and we like Michael Jordan analogies. Okay, always. Not enough basketball on the show. All right, email time. Yes, please. House of Run at gmail dot com is the email address. Let's go to Kyle, formerly of South Dakota, now of Wisconsin. Oh, drink. Love the Chicago Marathon recap last week as well as the Vegas MMA fight, MMA fight coverage. That's what we do here, you, you know? That's all you uh, as far as fights breaking out after fights, you asked what sport would be the most unlikely. I'm surprised you didn't mention hockey, in particular hockey hotbeds such as Vegas and Tampa may provide <laughs> challenges, making it tough to use the skates out in the parking lot. But wouldn't a marathon breaking out after a marathon also provide challenges? <laughs> What if the Galen fans challenge the Mo fans to a marathon right after watching Chicago? I guess the good thing is that with Chicago, the start line is close to the finish area, so they could just jump on the course and duke it out over 26.2 miles. Or maybe pole vaulting. Hopefully pole vaulting fan, pole vault fans would carry their own poles in their vehicle when they went to watch it. <laughs> that would be cool. There is like a really insidery like pole vaulting network. This is kind of cool. I, I didn't know about it until this year when I went to see Mondo vault the Texas Relays and the place was packed which is right near the vault hmm. uh, a lot of i mean i guess lot, if mono was vaulting i would make sure i'm i'm close to the vault yeah they, they these people were into it they knew what they were watching they knew every tick um a lot of them were like you know high school kids themselves who were vaulters it was it was in, very intense he says regarding the chicago marathon i was very lucky and was asked to be a pacer this year i was pretty pumped and hoping maybe galen or mo would sign up to run in my group <laughs> Plus, I was hoping for those Foot Locker Pacer uniforms, which I could then wear to a Foot Locker store like wearing a Hawaiian shirt to Island Burgers, right? <laughs> and when the guy leading the Pacer program told me I would be going through at 2.05, uh, I was 
This is perfect. I'm with the lead group. Okay, anyway, that was my dream. Actually, I was going through 205, but that was halfway. <laughs> I was one of the trios of Pacers for the 410 group. Now, for the record, we did way better than Kipchoge's Pacers at Berlin. We were 204.38 at halfway and 409.33. Finish. Nailed it. It's good. As you both com- uh, commented, it was not a day for fast times, not terrible conditions like the 80 degrees and sunny at Chicago last year, but 60s with high humidity did not make for fast conditions. I believe Moe's 205.11 is definitely in the 204s with Berlin-like conditions, but he is still barely within a mile of Iliud. Last, please see attached photo. I'm looking at a photo here, and um, there's two wa- two bottles. On one of them, it says Bank of America Chicago Marathon, and on the other is one that, Probably housed mustard. <laughs> yep. It's a yellow condiment bottle. Uh, he says, my buddy was watching the marathon around the 10K mark and picked up a couple of the elite water bottles that they discarded right in front of him. Amazingly, one was from uh, Garamu, who ended up second. So wow. that's the Chicago Marathon one. I can't quite explain why his bottle's lined with a black garbage bag. Maybe makes it easier to pick out. Oh, yeah. So it is. There's like, yeah, it's literally like the tore off a piece of a garbage bag and like ran it around it. It's wearing it like as a scarf. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he needs Klaus to hand his bottle to him. Anyway, I now have the DNA of Garamu and Parker Stinson. So Parker Stinson's <laughs> bottle is the one that is the ketchup bottle. Mustard. And it says yep. mustard bottle. Sorry, it says Parker Stinson 10K aid station. Uh, it feels like Sheldon from Big Bang Theory ending up with Leonard Nimoy's DNA. Seems best that I freeze them and hope one of them wins some big marathons. Hashtag eBay. Because long distance marathon fans would shell out major dollars for elite water bottles from the 10K point of 2018 Chicago. <laughs> uh, love the show. Keep up the great witty banter analysis. Kyle, formerly of South Dakota, now from Wisconsin. I'm guessing Garamu did that to make his bottle stand out. Mm-hmm. Um, elites, the night before, when they drop off their bottles, they also have like bottle decorating stations. So you can do like arts and crafts on your bottle and add. Mm different colors, ribbons, like jewels you can put on them to make them. And the whole idea is to make them stand out. Cause most marathons don't have a Klaus. Like they don't have an individual right. person. Like you're picking them up off of a table. So you want to make sure that yours is easily uh, distinguished. Yeah. I, I, I like it. Um, I like the, I like the mustard bottle too. I think that's kind of, kind of cool. <laughs> Not much comes out, right? I mean, it's very, that's a very thin, or easy sorry, to very squeeze s- though, right? Like, sm- like, oh yeah, that's true. If you, yeah, if you just want the quick, because it's like sometimes you know you gotta like pop it, and then like some of those like more heavy duty ones are a little, they're not meant for squeeze, they're meant for like you know sucking the water out of them. But like, if you ever been to a restaurant with those ketchup and mustard bottles, like those are like the easiest flies out. Yeah. What I would be worried about is nothing comes out, you shake it, nothing comes out, you shake it, and then a whole bunch of it just sprays out like a freaking machine gun that's all true. over your shirt. Because that's what happened. <laughs> Every time I deal with – actually, jelly is the thing that comes out that way now for me because my son eats a ton of peanut butter and jellies. Mm. It's like it's the most annoying thing. Uh, Corey from Kansas. Another Kansan. Just killing it in the middle of the country. Uh, where do you guys go for your stats? I'm impressed how fast you can pull things up when you're recording. Yeah, because we're – just should be more prepared and we don't have it. Uh, he said he wants to see Jager's season. So we're talking about things to look forward to in 2019. Seems he ran very sparsely this year. Don't know how he can stay at a high level that way. But maybe that's why he stays at a high level. Doesn't run that much. Uh, amazed how leading marathon runners handle all the craziness around them. Keep pace. Kipchoge had cars, bicycles, motorcycles all around them going forward and back. Like once you run with a laser in front of you and like random pacers shuttling in and out on a Formula One track. Yeah, that's, maybe, maybe it seems easier. Maybe it's Kevin harder. Hart yelling. Yeah, it's like gotta <laughs> be gotta be easier. Um, yeah, that's that is interesting though. Like it's a lot going on. I guess it's probably good distraction. Of course, when you're that fast, I don't know if you want distraction or not. Um, the the stats. It's uh, the Tillis Tabaja is a, is really good. Yeah, yeah. For for a lot of stuff, it has. Uh, I mean, it, it has good regular stuff, but if you get the the premium, um, mm-hmm. man, you could it really is great for that stuff. And then Kevin just has his memory palace where he keeps uh, all this stuff going on. No, I mean, all time dash athletics is good. And then the I will F like that one's good. Cause you can break it down by like year and country and stuff like that. But usually those 
three. NevadaTrackStats.com is big. I can find I can find those. That was, that was a long time ago. How <laughs> many stats there? Yeah, uh, usually those three I can find whatever I want. Although I mean there are some limitations, like when we were trying desperately to figure out the Pharaoh Rup thing. Mm, yeah. About r- what constitutes a rivalry, and then we were trying to find the Willis Centro thing. But now we know it's twenty two and one. With, so we can just build on it for next time, Fair and Rupp race. We don't need to look it up anymore. We already looked it up. Done. Set in there forever. And there's no way we'll forget it. <laughs> uh, let's go to... Let's go to Thomas from York, PA. Yeah. Said, been listening since June this year. Love the show. Want to drop my thoughts a few things that have happened the past few months. First, high school is going pro. Strictly out of high school. A name you might remember, Josh Hoey, is from my... Uh, state and was committed to Oregon, then suddenly decided to go pro. Now, someone who, who's just your average high school runner personally thought he was insane giving up a chance to run at Oregon. In my opinion, there's one reason you should immediately go pro, and that's if you dominate internationally while still in high school like Mondo or Sydney. Speaking of young people being really good internationally, European young Jacob Ingebrigtsen and Mondo winning European champs really blows my mind, but being a pole vault guy myself, Um, Oh, we were just talking about pole vault guys in high school. See? There it is. Uh, I'm going to focus on Mondo. When I scrolled through my Twitter feed to see the pole vault final results, the next day I saw he won with a 6.05. I nearly puked. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that is absurd. Like, that's like, oh, let me check. Like, how? let's see. What was the winning time in the mile in, uh, you know, in the the state meet this year? Oh, 347? Okay. (laughs) Cool. Yeah. We talked about how that's. Whoever had to vault against him is just this is not fair. Brutal, yeah. It's comically. I mean, it, it is. What he did is almost. I mean, it's more impressive than what Sydney did in high school. Yeah, which is right, I mean, know, crazy to say, but it. Yeah. Well, I mean, so Sydney, her first year of, um, or sorry, her last year of high school, because we have a pretty decent comparison with this, right? She ran USA's. Now, granted, she ran in what turned out to be the craziest USA four-meter hurdle race of all time, but she got six, which is incredible. Yeah. High school senior, six of the nation. I mean, Mondo with a 605, if there were worlds this year, he'd have been... Yeah, he was like top in the mix three all time. Like, I mean, that's... Yeah. Yeah, it's, at the time, Sydney was sixth at USA's and top 10 in the world, probably. Um, yeah. But Mondo was literally like, a you know, would have been one of the co-favorites for gold. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, he says, last week saw Rye Benjamin clear to compete for U.S. international competition. Leaves me with two pending thoughts. One, should the USC indoor 4x4 now be considered the world record? Well, Jason said yes before. I, I, think, it I, was already, no. I think it already was. Yeah, it's, it's still the world record to me. <laughs> yeah, well, I say no because it already was a world record. So. Yes, exactly. Uh, in my opinion, yes, it should, but I can already see the counter argument of the of at the time he wasn't so I'll let that one slide. Two for the next few championships, who should be in the four by four, and are Michael Norman and Ryan Benjamin automatic picks for the squad? Uh, he says yes, but I don't know the other two. Thanks for hearing what I have to say. I'll probably write back in the next few months. Nice, it's Thomas from York, PA. Let's let's zero in on that four by four question. Ryan Benjamin going to the U.S. or sorry, going to the U.S. He's already mm-hmm. in the U.S. He's born in the U.S. Ryan Benjamin being cleared to compete internationally for the United States. Yeah. I I mean, obviously, it makes a foreign hurdle team harder to make and makes the foreign meter hurdle hopes for the United States pretty good. But he was a really strong foreign meter runner, too. And I don't know if necessarily he's going to be focused on running 4 by 4s in championships and things like that. But, man, he had some depth there. I mean, I guess you got to put Curly on there. Curly's an obvious choice. Yeah, I mean, hasn't made, like that you know next leap up like had that one you know 43 7 but like even without that leap like he's a 44 low type of guy which is really really valuable um i mean if if i could pick who another guy would be i'd put noah lyles on the team and i don't even care that he doesn't run the 400 Um, (laughs) just the most like just like what's gonna get the most clicks yeah and also like no lyles would be good at the 400 i just feel good about that um outside of that yeah who would be i mean you always have to have an old guy, so you want to throw LaShawn Merritt on there. I totally understand. Um, but there's, yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, a lot of college guys, right? I mean. Yeah, it's pretty open. Like, if you just look at the yearly list um, for the United States, 
Norman is far above, far away the best. Um, and then Curly had the second best time. But then it's Strother who was in college. Dadewa wasn't in college, but he ran pretty well. Kamari Montgomery was in college. Quincy Hall was in college. You know, Will London, college. Someone will pop up before next year. They'll be fine. But it's not like Ry Ben. Now you look at the times. Like Ry Benjamin could get on that team. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's he's good enough for sure. Um, and yeah, it wouldn't shock me if he if he you know was constantly on the four by fours. Like that seems doesn't seem doesn't seem crazy. Yeah. Just keep in mind, kids and adults of all ages out there. Ry Benjamin this year. Ran forty seven, oh two for a four hundred with hurdles in the way. Ten of them. Yes. It's so. Yeah, I mean he's he's do, do your absurd. calculations as you see fit. From and there. the four hundred hurdles is or the the four by four is usually last, and the four hundred hurdles is usually first. So it's easy for nothing. Him to do both. Nothing to lose, right? Yeah, nothing to lose. Exactly. Okay, let's go to Brian. Email it for me from Raleigh, but now from Pennsylvania. Drink. Email is titled Prenats and Jorgensen. I'll handle the Prenats part. You do the Jorgensen part. Fair. Um, he says, as boots on the ground, talking about me, uh, what did you think of NAU and BYU? Do you think either team has the advantage at the moment? And then one more question related to Chicago. What would you do if you were Gwen Jorgensen's situation? Keep grinding at the marathon, switch back to the triathlon, readjust the goal to 5K or 10K? That's Brian. So I'll, I'll let you go first with those Jorgensen questions. Um, okay, so if your goal is to win a gold in something, then you go back to the triathlon, I guess, because you're not doing it in those track events or marathon events. But if your goal is to medal in something, then go back to the triathlon because you're probably not going to do it in those events. But, um, I mean, between the 5K, 10, 5, 10K, I mean, she's, she ran some certainly good times um, on the track. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I still wouldn't pick her to to you know uh medal um i i think she's medal or make the team well both oh. uh i she could make the team <laughs> oh, yeah. i guess i mean certainly not medal but she she could make the team um but the mar- i mean the marathon is more brutal i guess a more brutal road even if even if you go like oh you know she has more potential in the marathon which you know may or may not be true just the the amount of women who are really really good in the marathon is, is absolutely brutal. Um, so I don't, yeah, I don't know exactly what, what you do in that situation. I mean, you could try, you could try to do the 10 K. Like I said, she, she did pretty well in some limited, limited time there. Tough either way you look at it. Yeah. I mean, there's so no much. This is about route. timing. <laughs> yeah. And the timing to be going for a marathon team right now. I mean, imagine if the women's marathon team was analogous to the men's marathon team right now in the United States. Yeah. Then you'd you, stay in the marathon unquestionably. You could concoct a situation where she makes a team. I think 10 K is going to be tough. I know she ran fast, but she was what? Seventh at USA's That's this year. Thing, yeah. And that, I mean, there's going to be more people next year because it's a non championship year. I I would think Huddle st- is still there next year, and Sisson and Mary. Like that just seems. Who who was in that? Uh, I'm trying to find the. Let me get the results here. Yeah, because that's I, nothing. I mean, sure, sure. Like, this is brutal. Like you switch. You know, I mean, like you did run in your old event, but like now, like you're switching into like people who are really great at, it, even though she is really great at it. Like it, it's that's a, a tough hill to climb. Yeah, she – I mean, she'll continue to get better, and you could say, okay, maybe she'll continue to get better at a rate of the average runner, right, because she's new to this stuff. But it's like, is she going to get better at a quicker rate than someone like Carissa Schweizer, who's coming from college and then now is running as a pro and is only 22, 23 years old? Right. Because – um you know, Schweizer was just behind her when they ran against each other at the Stanford race. So the USA's 10,000 this past year, Huddle one, Mary Hall two, Stephanie Bruce three, uh, Emily Sisson four, and then Jorgensen was in seventh. So she was like 19 seconds out of third. I mean, Emily Enfeld isn't in there 
someone like Schweizer's uh, didn't run the race. I'm sure I'm forgetting you know, more Bowerman Track Club people. Right. <laughs> but I, it's it's tough. Yeah, I mean, what do you do if you're I, like out of those options? I mean, it depends what your goal is. I think you're right. Like, if you want to win another gold medal, it's triathlon. But that's how it's been the entire... Yeah, I mean, like, that was the obvious choice from the beginning. Time, I don't. I think... I mean, you're committed to the marathon, probably. I'd, I'd give it at least one more marathon to see. For sure. Because there's a scenario where um, Shalane Flanagan retires. Molly Huddle decides to just stick with the track. <laughs> Jordan, I mean, this is you're drawing inside straight. Right, yeah. Trying to run, through. but J- Jordan Hase can't get healthy. Uh, Des Linden can't get healthy. You know, the, like, and Jorgensen improves by 14 minutes. Like, I mean, it's it's that well, has to be part of it, no matter what. Yes, yes, that's part of the calculation for sure. But it's you could talk yourself into okay, things clarify. I just feel like the five and the ten, they. There's just going to be like an endless supply right now. It seems like of U.S. women who are going to be able to run, you know, four, fifteen low, in you know, to fourteen high, and she could be one of them. But it, it just seems it just seems incredibly tough. And now that you've committed to the marathon, you want to at least give it that second shot. Yeah, I mean, you one marathon is, does not tell us a lot. Yeah, so I I probably if I if I'm trying to. Focus just on 5K, 10K marathon. Like, if it's just a track question, I'd, I'd stick with it one more. Do the spring marathon and then reevaluate because then you still have plenty of time before 2020 if you want to go to the track. We've seen people like Amy Hastings, right? Like, excuse me, a- Amy Craig and yeah. Ritz both got fourth in the trials marathon in 12 and then came back and qualified in the in the 10,000 later on that year. It's not mm-hmm. impossible to shift down in the training, but if you've committed this much, you might as well. I mean, all of them are hard to make the team. All of them are nearly impossible to medal at the Olympics. Yes. <laughs> so that's that's not going away. All right. Oh, and pre-nats, his pre-nat question. What do I think of NAU and BYU? Uh, do I think either team has the advantage at the moment? So they were in different races because they split them into two evenly races because there's just so many evenly seated races because there's so many top teams there. BYU scored 29. They had all five in the top 12. Their race was a little weaker. NAU was in the 40s. NAU would have won their they won their race by about 40 some odd points too. I'm still favoring NAU at this point. Tyler Day and Matt Baxter are pretty solid two and three and. The rest of that court seems solid too. The thing with BYU is they have seven like interchangeable pieces, makes them very intimidating. Mm. But I like I like any at this point to to get the three P. But it's still those two are a tier above everybody else. So and BYU is is a great team. I'm not I'm not saying you know it's a lock that NAU has it yet. BYU ran well enough on Saturday to definitely stay in the conversation, and they're far and away um, in the in the only team that can beat NAU is BYU. And that is my cross country thing. Well, actually, no, we got more cross country questions from Timmy Two Shoes. Yeah, who's going to close this out? Email or formerly from Springfield, now from Boston. Drink. He says. Uh, I probably covered how I feel about NAU in my email from Nettycomb, but I'm impressed how well BYU competed this past weekend. Of course, they were similarly dominant last year. Well, this is a good point Timmy brings up here. Uh, only to fall short tactically at Natty's. It sounds from post-race interviews like Coach Eyestone has learned his lesson from last year, which ought to make for a more interesting race come November. That is interesting. They did basically say, and I talked to Rory Linklater, who won the race for BYU, like, hey, you guys gearing up for NAU? Did you like, watch any race? It's like, our goal isn't even to win nationals. Our goal is just like run our best. Wherever we end up, that's where we end up. So they're purposely trying not to focus on this head-to-head matchup because last year I think they were really focused on it mm. and they had a, a bad race at nationals and dropped all the way to third. Um, he said, thanks to Sydney for helping me win the bet I had with my buddies about where she was going to sign. Uh, don't worry, Jason. I'll be sure to scrounge up something cross-country related for you for my next message, assuming this one doesn't make it until next week's episode. You're wrong. 
made it this week's episode because we had to record later because Jason's going to New Orleans tomorrow. That is true. I had to, I had to go into work briefly. Um, so yeah, evening recording on Monday instead of the instead of the afternoon. So you're welcome, Timmy. Two shoes. Late late night for me. He signs it up. Carry Timmy two shoes. Emailer formerly from Raleigh, or sorry, formerly <laughs> from Raleigh. See, it's later for me out here yeah, yeah, in Central Time Zone. Good. Email for me from Springfield, now from Boston. Yeah, that's that uh, is Timmy Two Shoes. Yeah, and thank you yeah. for the uh, all the you gave me a bunch of food and whatnot, Rex for for New Orleans as well. So I appreciate that. You are very welcome. Anybody else have any food recommendations? Yeah, tweet, tweet me, me email, or, or tweet me. Yeah, to to Jason. He's making his maiden voyage to. New Orleans. First time in Louisiana. First time in the South in, at all, I'm guessing. Uh, I've been to Texas, but outside of that, yes. Well, yeah. Which part of Texas? Uh, let's see. I went to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I went to... Um, where was it? Somewhere else in the middle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle? Well, it was like... It was for someone's uh, 30th birthday, and they had like this... They got a house on a lake like somewhere, just like few hours okay. outside there so but it was like in the middle yeah i don't think texas be, well i live here i should know this i don't think they consider themselves the south but they just it's just texas right like they're then they're yeah they're very much into like the whole, yeah. they're very much into the whole state pride thing and not liking people from california they kind of they kind of think they have a rivalry with california which is funny because like n- and they're always like comparing themselves to California because so many people like me move from California to Texas. But like when I live in California, I never once heard people be like, "Oh man, Texas!" <laughs> like, right? It's it's very one sided. Yeah, it's a it's the Mo Farah and Galen Rupp of state rivalries. Mm, I feel like that's good. Yeah, I, like I mean, it goes. Texas has things that are, you know, it's good at like barbecue and stuff. But it, it's just like one one of them is is way more concerned about the other, and I know why. Because in California today, it was probably 75 degrees. <laughs> and in Texas today, Austin specifically, it was like 50. And yesterday, it was like 90. It dropped like 35 degrees in one day. Kind of happened here, too. We were oh. we were up in the, the you know, 80s, 90s. So it, was, it was really good. And then last night, it was like low 50s. It's just like been f- like bone-chillingly cold rain for 24 hours. Nice. Now. And yesterday, when I was at... Um, Asbo, no, I can't call him Asbo. Mutai de Baba Sully anymore. I'm running out of names. Meb, when I was at Meb eating Sully's uh, soccer game, it was just stifling humidity and just hot and gross. Yeah. Looking forward to the South. We'll see how that goes. Well, I think you'll be. Well, what, are, what is the weather supposed yeah, to be? Yeah, I, I looked. Let's see. Tomorrow, thunderstorms. Wednesday, thunderstorms. Thursday, sunny. Friday, thunderstorms. What's the temperature though? Uh, it's uh, high seventies, low to mid eighties, and the, oh, okay. So actually, yeah, temperature wise, looks pretty good. It only, you know, low seventies and the low, so should be nice. Yeah, it'll probably it'll probably be super muggy, but that's that's fine. That's better than a lot better than it could be. All right, hassle at gmail That's the email address. Thanks everybody to uh, for writing in um, and paying attention during our Sydney Meb Bolt Soccer Spectacular. Pretty good for August. Yeah. I mean, hey, 75 minutes on three topics, basically. It's pretty good. Remember, it's always quantity, not quality. All right. We'll talk to you guys next week. Jessica Ennis, what should I do in New Orleans? Hmm, Dodgers about to lose. Down 4 nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Just... Can't score.